In this lesson, we're going to look at what makes animals different. So what we call this is variation. So usually within one species, there is a giant variation of different types. So meaning we see different phenotypes within one species. So here we have a picture of, or, or a big um, collection of pictures of the dog. So the dog is the, the, the um, species but we see hundreds of different breeds within the one species and the reason why there are so many breeds on earth is yes we've bred them this way but we have selected them and uh, to have different phenotypes because they now have different genotypes so variation means it's basically when we have, there are different genotypes on the inside they're genetically different and thus the phenotype what we see on the outside differs among the different animals or the different individuals of the same species. So this picture shows us many, many individuals and each one of them are different looking, even though they are still a dog. We can actually have put a couple of or a lot of pictures here of human faces because all of us, each one of us are different from the other one. Even identical twins, if you look closely, their phenotypes will be different. There is something that differs between them. You don't see it identical uh, individual ever. Same thing here for the dogs. So it's because our genotypes are different on the inside, there are so many phenotypes, different phenotypes than on the outside, and that is variation. So the second bullet here on, on the slide says differences co are caused by mutations. So yes, genetically, mutations are the thing that causes the genotypes to be different that way, and the mutation basically is just a change in the DNA sequence. So again, all of us have ATCG in um, different clusters or different varieties of ATCG. A to G and so on, but what the sequence, uh, what makes us different from each other is when the sequences differ a little bit. So yes, we all are the same um, species, the dogs are the same species, but the thing that makes each individual so genetically different is the fact that there is a random base a little bit different for a certain gene amongst them. So it's basically when the DNA sequence is a little bit different between each individual and that's usually caused by a mutation. So the third bullet here, it's usually brought on by selection. Yes, usually humans select individuals or it can be natural selection, meaning um, that environmental factors such as floods, droughts, you name it, anything in the environment that's not caused by humans can also select individuals um, to survive and some to die. So basically here in parentheses is the survival and then hence the reproduction of certain individuals and then the, the genes of the individuals that survived, they can be passed on to the offspring. And that's how the, those genes then survive basically within a species. So what is the importance of this variation? Why is it so important, actually, let's take the example of the dog, to see so many different breeds? Well, basically, it's there to improve the species' ability to adapt and survive. That's the main thing. I mean, animals, humans, all of us, we want to survive and continue um, living, even if us as individuals, if we die, we want our species to continue in our kids and our grandkids. So the the alleles then have to survive, the genes then have to survive so that it can be passed on and so that the species can survive. So secondly, a variety of alleles then ensures that a certain individual can survive when the environment changes. So that's basically if one individual has the allele for, um, let's say, pest intolerance, that individual will then die if it gets bitten by a certain tick or a flea or something but if it happens that there is an individual in a species or in a let's say a small community of dogs it has the allele for pest resistance meaning if a tick or um, insect of any kind bites it and is, has some poison in it, it has the gene to be able to survive for it, or the allele base actually to survive it. So then that individual survives the onslaught from the environment or from the insect, and then it reproduces and it then passes on its genes with that specific allele to its offspring. So then that specific allele that enables it to be pest resistant carries on to the offspring. And so usually that now is the variety we see in the alleles. So without different types of alleles, we could not have the survival of a specific species. So it's very important to have variation, mainly when your environment changes, meaning if it's suddenly a drought and some individuals are more um, 
cold tolerant, meaning they handle the cold. Now, all of, all of a sudden, the environment changes, global warming, all that, it gets hotter. Only the individuals with the alleles that enable them to survive in a hot climate can then further on survive, reproduce, and carry on the alleles. So it's very important for when the environment changes. So what then is the importance of selection itself? So firstly, for us humans, it's very important because we can now create a different breeds and strains, when we look at plants, of species to fulfill um, our needs. So mainly that is why we see so many breeds here of dog. Um, basically all dog, dogs come from the wolf. So basically they are actually wolves, but we have changed their looks and their personality and everything about them, even their genes to an extent, um, to our own benefit. So <laughs> technically we have not benefited the dog because many of them actually suffer from hip dysplasia and cancer and eye problems and you know, skin problems, so many different things because we've selected for some characteristics and we've actually changed their genes completely. So they don't look like the wolf anymore, but technically, genetically, they are wolves because the wolf is their ancestor. So this picture is actually quite nice. It shows you in different countries the different type of breeds we get and which breeds we use to create other breeds and so on. But all of them are related to the wolf. So mainly selection is there for human gain. But secondly, also it serves as food and resources for farmers. So if we look in the in the context of a farmer who wants to manipulate and select certain livestock, it's there to obviously eventually why do we have farmers is to feed the country. So we want to improve food and the farmer himself wants to improve certain resources for himself. So uh, such as certain plantations, um, also certain feed he can plant, like maize, wheat, and so on, he plants for his livestock. So certain resources that he needs to manipulate to improve his life, basically, economically, and also just from day to day, the, the workings on a farm. So selection is mainly there actually to improve human life, but it can also sometimes improve actually animal life. So some uh, selections can actually improve the quality of an animal's life. Let's say like pest resistance. That is definitely better for the animal to survive or have a happier life if it is more resistant to pests. So there are certain causes of variation except us humans. So there are some external causes such as the climate of an environment can manipulate which individuals survive, meaning which alleles then continue, so a hot climate, a cold climate, topography as well. So here we see usually topography has to do with climate because the higher up in elevation you go, colder an environment is, the lower down you go, the hotter environment would get. And like here, you can assume this is like a desert area, some places hotter, colder, so it comes back to climate. Also light intensity, the higher up you go, the more intense the light would be. Um, this could be bad for, again, skin cancer. The lower down you go, the less intense light would be. Uh, color, meaning the color of the environment. Um, and with color here, it also goes to, um, I can't get to the word, camouflage. So meaning, I hope you guys can see this nice um, owl sitting right here. So its color corresponds with the, the color of its environment so that it can camouflage itself and that allows this guy to survive. Not just, uh, it's not just hiding from predators. Owls usually are on the top of the food chain. It is hiding away from prey and then because the prey can't see it, it will be able to catch mice and other animals that it wants to eat. Uh, then diseases in the environment as well. If there's any kind of outbreak of a disease and the animal gets affected by it, it can die or survive. So again, if, you, if it's disease resistant, it can survive. And then you've got certain feed. Uh, depending on what the animal is eating, it either gets enough nutrients or not enough nutrients. And then also exercise. Usually animals, well, all animals need to move about so that they can move their muscles, extend their limbs, so on. And usually your enclosed animals, like your battery chickens, they can't, yeah, generally they can't move at all. So later on they can lose um, the ability to move their legs and to fly because they can't extend their wings, so they can't um, exercise their wing muscles, so on and so forth. So your environment physically also um, causes the very, uh, leads to with uh, the word influences the variation of the population because all these things have to do with the survival of the individuals. So if the animals die because of the environment, genes cannot be passed on to progeny. 
Then also there are internal causes of variation. So there are some genetic things. So the first thing is recombinant genes. This is basically the rearrangement of alleles and gametes. So where this is one individual, this individual in each of its cells, it has for argument's sake four chromosomes, um, one each from mom and dad, one from mom and dad. This individual has 50% from mom, 50% from dad. And how these chromosomes actually uh, align when the gametes form are completely random. So this capital B can group with this capital E in this gamete, or the small b with a small e, or differently, capital with a small, a small with a capital. It's all random how these gametes form. So meaning this gamete can then fuse with another individual's gamete and you'll get a heterozygous individual. Or it can be this gamete that fuses with another one and then you get a homozygous individual. So this is completely random. So recombinant genes is the first thing. Then crossing over during interphase is the next thing. So chromosomes generally, before meiosis happens, they exchange DNA. So one chromosome from mum, one from dad, they then exchange um, this DNA which makes it genetically different. This new individual that forms a new offspring then will have, again, uh, exchange DNA like this, and it's completely random where it happens, when it happens, and which gametes it's going to be. Then thirdly is mutations. You get different types, point and chromosomal. Um, in this example here, you've got a point um, mutation, meaning it was the original sequence was like this with the, with the thymine over here, and then when it was replicated, this DNA strand, you get a cytosine right here. So mutations are random. There are three different things internally that causes variation. And lastly, we have chromosomal mutations as an example here. So yes, you guys have to know the different types. So the first type of chromosomal um, mutation you get is the lesion. So we start on this side. Here we have a normal chromosome. And this one just hasn't been replicated. That's why it looks like a finger or a straight strand like this. It doesn't look like a butterfly uh, format, format. So we have the genes A to H, but now on this side we have A, B, C, O, and no D, but we have still E, F, G, H. So in this case, the D gene was deleted. It was taken away. It fell away. So something happened again during replication. Something went wrong, and this we call deletion if this, if this chromosome loses a specific gene. So we have deletion. Then we move on to duplication. So in this case, we've got a normal str um, strand A to H, but now all of a sudden after replication, you have a chromosome that has A, B, C, B, C, and the rest is normal. So this is duplication. B and C then was duplicated. You also get a different type of chromosomal um, mutation called inversion. So in this, this is usually when the genes, they swap 180 degrees. So you have A, B, C, D. In this case, here you have, here's your B, C, D, but it's the other way around. So now D is first, then C, then B. So this was inverted 180 degrees. And the last example you get is translocation. So translocation usually happens when you've got two different chromosomes and they actually also exchange DNA, but a big chunk of DNA now has been exchanged. It does not happen during interphase. This was never supposed to happen. So later on, somewhere during meiosis, something goes wrong. So this A and B gene then swap to this side. So here we have it, AB, and the MNO over here was swapped to the other chromosome. This can sometimes happen on the same chromosome as well, but usually it's more easy for this to occur between two different chromosomes. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. So